This one actually comes from a comment on one of my videos by a user named Tardis Time, in which they said that there was an animated children's short film they watched as a kid called The Itch of the Golden Knit. This short film was created in collaboration with Ardman Animations and the British art company Tate. It apparently aired in theaters for only two days and aired once on CBBC between 2011 and 2012, and the characters and background were completely drawn by children. It's also said that it starred two kids and a dad that was played by Harry Enfield, and that David Williams played the Golden Knit who was apparently the only 3D character in the short film. They also remember a villain named Evil Stella and a superhero possibly named Ten Hartman. It actually won a Guinness World Record as well and a Children's BAFTA for Interactive Award in 2011. But as of now, all we have of the short film is some clips from a making of the film, a song with a music video from the film called The Pirate Song, the apparent full script, some screenshots in the first 43 seconds of the film. The creators of the American game show The Joker's Wild were Jack Berry and Dan Enright. The quiz scandals of the 1950s when all the shows airing at the time were being investigated for being rigged for high ratings marked the duo's first production since those scandals. It debuted on CBS on September 4th, 1972, which is the same day as other game shows like Gambit and The New Price is Right, and the show quickly gained popularity. It was revived several times over the years, most recently in 2017 on TBS. However, after a few pilots were recorded a year prior, there was an attempt to revive the show in 2007. The pilot's structure was reportedly similar to what aired in the 1970s. A huge slot machine is spun by two contestants, and depending on which categories or jokers it lands on, the value of a correct response is determined by how frequently the selected category appears on the board. The pilots, along with another game show called Combination Lock, were recorded in 2006 with an eye toward a potential 2007 syndication season premiere. The pilots used the same slot machine that had been used a year before for Vegas Week on Wheel of Fortune, and the first pilot was hosted by Mark Maxwell Smith, the second by Alex Cambert, and the third by Charlie O'Donnell, with Charlie O'Donnell serving as the announcer. The shows were pitched to NBC-owned affiliates and were set to be approved, but King World didn't like the station's offer, so unfortunately the pilots were not picked up. The entire series did not premiere again until 2007 on TBS, where it ran for two seasons before wrapping up in 2019. Only a software demo for the pilots and a few images from the Mark Maxwell pilot can currently be found because the pilots have since faded into obscurity, and it's unclear if the pilots will ever surface again. Marcy Gaston, which translates to Thanks Gaston, is a French children's television show that debuted in early 1989. It was based on the French-Belgian Gaston Lagaffe gag comic series by Frank Quinn, and was the first official television adaptation of the franchise. The premise of the show has no official description, but at least one viewer claimed that it was a parody talk show where Fantasio and Spiru would interview actual cartoonists. There was a contest that required participants to respond to two questions in a coupon they mailed in, and it was prominently featured in the show's advertisements. The results of the contest would be displayed on the show itself. The winners would be drawn at random from among those who submitted correct answers. The top winner would receive an Atari 520ST computer with a colored monitor, while the four runners-up would receive the same machine without the monitor along with 100 comic books each. No episode of the series' video content has ever reappeared after its initial broadcast. The Gaston comic has never received a reissue despite being a very popular comic in French-speaking Europe. The Spiro magazine of the Times advertisements and behind-the-scenes articles are where almost all information about the series is found. There are some pictures of the show's props, but there aren't many actual screen captures of the show in action. With only a brief run in the first half of 1989, Croak Madden, the TV block where Marcy Gaston aired, is largely also lost to media as well. Stan Lee, an author and illustrator well known for writing and creating a number of superheroes in the Marvel Comics catalog, appeared in a commercial for Persona, which was an American Razor and Blades company that was taped and shot in 1976 to promote Persona's new product, the Persona Double Two. The commercial then later aired on that same year. Even today, you can still view some stills from the advertisements that were posted online by different users in the official Stan Lee accounts on Twitter and Instagram. These still show various scenes from the advertisement. The 30 second running time of this advertisement is confirmed by the image stills that are attached to the post. According to the still, Stan Lee said the following lines in this advertisement. You know, here at Marvel, I've got Spider-Man and all these characters and supervillains such as Doctor Doom to worry about. I can't waste time worrying about things like shaving. This guy calls me and he says, Try a Persona Double 2, and I said, okay, I'll try it. The Persona is beautifully designed. Twin blades on each side, it's clean, it's got quality. Like they told me, there's no finer shaving system ever made. I may create a whole new character. Persona Man. 
A page from a 1976 issue of the Marvel Bullpen Bulletins features a soapbox where Stan Lee is renowned for informing the readers about the workings of comic books and other forms of media. However, Stan spends more time on this particular soapbox discussing the Persona Razor and Blaze advertisement that aired in that same year. Additionally, Stan discussed the potential for the team to make a Persona Man character based on the commercial and his final memorable line. Since it first aired more than 40 years ago, no video of this commercial has surfaced online as of the time of this recording. Filipino silent film Dela Gang Bukid was made in 1919 by Jose Nepocumano. It is the first movie made in the Philippines and was first released on September 12th under the distribution of Malayan movies. The brothers Jose and Jesus Nepocumano opened the photography store Electro Pernilio in 1915. Soon after, Electro Pernilio were developed into Malayan movies, which is the first Filipino film studio. The release date for the movie was September 12, 1919. Spanish, English, and Filipino subtitles were included in the release. A day after the film premiered, the newspaper Manila Nuva published a review which stated, the home of Angelita, the pretty heroine, is a correct picture of many Philippine families, although it somehow exaggerates the negative tones. With a budget of just 25000 and a box office of 90000 Dalagang Bukid was deemed a financial success. The works of Nepocumino have all been declared lost, due to the highly flammable materials used in the production of nitrate films. The Malayan movie studio is actually known to have burned down twice, in 1921 and 1923. The last remaining artifacts, such as newsreels, equipment, and prints of early films, are also said to have been destroyed during the Battle of Manila. Irem created the block-breaking arcade game Kazdai Gacho. The game is somewhat similar to Circus, which was an arcade game that XD released in 1977, in which players control a seesaw to pop balloons at the top. On March 4, 1987, it was first presented to the public at the AOU 1987 Amusement Expo, but it was never made available. Basically, the player controls a seesaw to make two-boy Gacho jump and break the three rows of balloons at the top. By breaking the balloons, items appear that power up or power down, and there were also 40 stages in total. We currently only have a small number of screenshots, though it's possible that a ROM board is out there somewhere. Paul Wernick and Rhett Reese developed the reality television series Stuck to ODB for the American broadcaster Spike TV. In order to win a cash prize, an average man had to spend the entire week staying within 10 feet of Old Dirty Bastard who is an American rapper and founding member of the hip-hop group Wu-Tang Clan. Paul Wernick and Rhett Reese had originally come up with a concept for a reality show called Handcuffed to Mike Tyson that would feature an everyday man who would have to spend an entire week handcuffed to professional boxer Mike Tyson. Initially supportive of the concept, Mike Tyson ultimately changed his mind after speaking with Spike TV executives. Old Dirty Bastard entered the picture when Paul and Rhett were asked to find somebody less controversial to replace Mike Tyson. According to some sources, three to four episodes were shot before production on the show was completed in the summer of 2004 and it was initially scheduled to premiere on September 14th of that same year, but for some reason this air date would not be kept. And on November 13th, 2004, Old Dirty Bastard tragically passed away at the age of 35 from an accidental drug overdose, putting the possibility of the show's release in jeopardy. After he passed away, Spike TV further postponed the airing of the show, with Spike TV stating, We express our condolences to the family and right now things are on hold due to the tragic circumstances. Old Dirty Bastards manager Jared Westfield said in an interview with the New York Daily News that it was mine and his mom's call to air the show, and we decided that for his fans this was a no-brainer. Dirty would have wanted it and the show has to air. However, despite Old Dirty Bastard's tragic death, a potential release of the show is still very much on the table. Since this show is reportedly scheduled to premiere on Spike TV at some point in early 2005, many of the articles discussing it at the time only asserted that it would have been delayed rather than cancelled. But despite Jared's remarks, Stuck to ODB would never be broadcast because its comedic tone clashed with the tragic events that surrounded it. No snippets or stills from the show were ever released, although Paul Wernick claimed in a 2013 interview with Grantland that he had an hour and a half of the show's footage. He also said that he didn't know how Spike would feel about him uploading it, making its release unlikely. 